So here is the Tecmar Wi-Fi thermostat, um, specifically made for, or at least what I use them for, for radiant in-floor heat and uh, concrete slabs. So what's great about these is that they are obviously Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi ability, um, and also the additional sensors you could add for um, monitoring slab temperatures or additional air sensors that you could add. So uh, the overall layout is is uh, pretty pretty nice, pretty sleek, um, pretty modern. I will say the menu and the feel of it once you get into it is is slightly outdated. However, it doesn't bother me. It actually works excellent, and that's all I really care about. So. Um, Basically on the screen here, you could sort of set what sort of things you want to see on the main screen. But if we click into this here, first thing you'll see is the temperature that the room currently is. You could see that it's set to heat to 68 degrees. So if I was to press the up arrow, um, I could change that up or down and then press select or cancel. Um, that's going to set my um, temperature that I want the room to be at. Obviously, we have the time showing up top. We could get into the heat mode, whether it's on or off, pretty simple. We could get into the settings here. You could set it for home or away. You could set a schedule. Um, you could play with the display settings, um, set the time. Uh, here's the Wi-Fi button to actually enable and set up your Wi-Fi. Then when you get into setup, um, this is where it gets into actually all the settings that you can sort of play with. So under toolbox is if you click on access level user, if you click on installer instead of user, it gives you a deeper menu setting. So we'll go ahead and set that. Um, you could calibrate the touch screen, gives you the software version under this toolbox uh, menu. Temp, so if you click on temp, it's gonna show you um, the ability to set the floor minimum if you have the temperature sensor for the floor hooked up, which is an addi additional sensor you have to purchase. It does not come with this thermostat. And I'll leave the part number in the description of this video. Um, so I'm able to set a floor minimum. So the beauty of this and why I use these and recommend these so often is that when you have radiant heat and you have a situation where you have uh, big windows or sliding glass doors and you have additional solar heat that has the ability to heat up the room uh, on those not even just warmer days but sometimes even on zero degree days believe it or not in my living room we have big sliding glass doors um, there's three of them so it is it, it it we get a lot of solar heat gain and what happens is that Thermostat will heat the house um, and keep it maintained to whatever degree we have the temperature and thermostat set to. Uh, but as the sun is shining for a few hours, it starts to heat up that room and actually satisfy not only the heat, but also go beyond. So sometimes I'll have my thermostat set to 68 and no joke, even when it's zero or 15 degrees out, um, it actually will heat the house to like 71, 72. So what's happening is the thermostat is never calling for heat in that long period of time. And it's going to let the slab cool off. So what you don't want to happen is that that slab will cool off, say three, four, five degrees. And then all of a sudden when it, the sun goes down, the house starts cooling off. It's going to now take hours and hours for that slab to be able to heat back up. Um, so you, you, you really don't want that. Um, and that's the beauty of this floor minimum is that what you'll do is you'll set that a few degrees below what your set temp is. And some of that's experimental. You have to see it's how um, efficient your piping was done and your insulation level. So it may not be a few degrees. It might be 10 degrees, it might be two degrees. Um, in my case, um, it, I have it set for 64. So I never let the slab drop below 64 degrees. So in the event that the sun is heating the room, um, up to 71, it will not, the boiler may still kick on just to maintain the slab temp so that when the uh, sun goes down, room cools off, the, the slab is ready to heat up and react. Um, so that's that. We'll just keep that set to 64. Um, you could also set the floor minimum difference when you're away. So you could, you could set a different temperature when you go on vacation or something to let it drop a little more. Um, the sensors are here, so this gives you the option. It's letting me know sensor one is floor, sensor two is off. You can add an additional room sensor. Um, internal room sensor is on. So that means this is actually, this thermostat is only looking at air temp unless the slab drops below a certain temp. So I don't use the slab temperature to actually set the, the, the temperature I want the house to be. I use the air temperature. Um, so let's see if we go back. 
um, here. So yeah, and then we could scroll over. So like I said, on the main screen here, it says heat to 68, but you can see it's 70 in here right now. Um, the floor, so it'll read you the floor temperature. And actually, because I set the sensor in the slab in a cooler spot, um, which unfortunately, because of the layout of the slab and where uh, you only have a 10 foot um, wire of the sensor to reach back up to this thermostat. So I actually had to set it in a spot that wasn't necessarily near two of the loops in the floor. So it actually reads slightly colder than the average temperature. So I'm actually able to go in and set the offset to this. So I actually have the floor temperature offset. So the floor where it's reading right now is probably about 64, but I was able to adjust that to read 67. Um, so if we scroll over, it'll also show you outdoor temperature, which is nice. And that's actually just done through um, when you connect it to Wi-Fi, you put in your location and it'll look at the closest um, weather report and be able to show you the outdoor temps. So that's really nice. Um, like I said, I recommend these to all of my customers in situations where it'll work for them. I do have other thermostats and whatnot that I would recommend for different situations, but mostly for radiant applications in floor heating, this is the way to go. Uh, Techmar also makes a 519 model. This is the 561. The 519 is a non-Wi-Fi version. It's just kind of dumbed down. It has the same features. It doesn't have Wi-Fi capability. Um, it is cheaper if you're just looking for a more budget product, uh, but it works just as great. I also use them in a ton of different builds. Um, and I always recommend whether uh, to my customers whether they want the non-Wi-Fi version or the Wi-Fi version. So I'm gonna go into the next um, part. We'll be showing you the app um, and how all the settings and all the features that you could see in that. So um, I'll just go over that quick right now. This is the layout. Once you open up the uh, Techmar app, you're able to choose from each individual zone or every thermostat you have in your home. Um, this is their sort of dashboard. As you see, I've, I've labeled our entire house just as home. You could put your address, you could put, uh, whatever description you'd like of that. And then you're also able to identify and name each thermostat to exactly what you want. So in our home, we have, uh, one thermostat that handles the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Um, the other one will handle the living room and kitchen area. It's a big wide open space. Um, so that has its own zone. And then our garage is also heated as well. So it's a three car garage with radiant heat in there. So I have an entire zone dedicated just for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the bedroom and baths. Um, and that's gonna load. Now what this brings up is obviously the set heat point that you set it to. You could turn that up or down. It's gonna tell you whether the mode is in heat or cool. It's gonna give you the floor temperature if you do have the floor uh, sensors installed and activated. Um, this allows you to also uh, set up a schedule. Now with radiant heat, your schedule is usually something you just want to ignore. I mean, it, it takes a long time for a slab to heat up and cool off. You do not really want to be changing the temperatures in that application, but if you're using it for a baseboard or radiator or any other application, you could certainly set a schedule and this app has the ability to do that. Um, what I really love about these is the usage because I am a nerd when it comes to um, diagnosing and even just seeing how the system works. Um, so I, I literally check this on like a daily or weekly basis. Um, so you click on usage and it's going to bring up the next menu, which is uh, it's pretty cool. It allows you, first of all, to download the entire history of the energy use. Uh, so you see up here, 2025 total energy use. If you click that and download it, you can It'll basically email you a spreadsheet of all of your usage. Um, so you have the choice to click on weekly, which gives you, if you scroll here, you'll be able to break it down by day, how many hours that the system has been running, um, which is really nice. I mean, again, just for diagnosing or just seeing what's going on with your system and how it's working. Um, then you can also change it to monthly. So once you build up, you can see that I installed my system around the October time. So that's the only data that we have so far. Um, and that usage really shoots up. Uh, as we are getting into the colder months here um, in New York. So uh, we really do experience, literally where I live, we experience a 100 degree temperature difference. So it could be zero degrees out and even below that, all the way up to 95, 98 degrees in the summer. Um, so you'll notice that we'll have big swings of heating um, requirements and needs. So yeah, I mean, um, a monthly basis to run this 
house um, you can see here in January just my bedroom thermostats ran for 200 hours let's go back over to weekly click on that and you can see that it does jump around so on warmer days you know if we, we've had a pretty cold winter but we've also we're starting to get into the season now where we have some uh, just random warm warm days so um, we'll still have some 12 degree days or we'll have a 45 degree day and that's what you're seeing here is that uh, the system either ran for 2.8 hours on the 26th, uh, but it ran for 10 and a half hours on Saturday, March 1st. So, um, but yeah, pretty cool um, that it has all these, um, all the data in here to be able to see that. And um, I guess is, well, actually, I'll just jump into the living room kitchen here just to show you that it's very similar. Obviously, um, the usage, though, you'll notice is, is very different because obviously your heating zones are going to be, uh, different heat losses and whatnot, but it's a cool example to at least see uh, what goes on. So like I said, if you're if you're nerded out and you want to see this kind of data, it's excellent for that. So hopefully you liked this review of the Tecmar Wi-Fi thermostat. If you guys got any questions at all, leave them in the comments, email me. My information is always in the description. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet. And with that said, we'll see you guys in the next one.